For those who've gathered on the shore of this English pond, it's like being an eyewitness to the rebirth of a species. Two beavers, a male and a female, are getting a new home in a place that hasn't seen a beaver in a very long time. It's all new for them, uh, but we'll give them time to adjust, but I think they'll be very happy here. This is why in Britain we're really excited to bring this species back. Beavers in Britain were hunted to extinction in the Middle Ages, more than 500 years ago. But thanks to conservationists who've pushed to change laws and get government backing, they're slowly on the rebound. I think there's still a nervousness about seeing this species widely released everywhere. So these projects will demonstrate to people what beavers do and don't do. I'd say we, we've not seen this species for several hundred years. So there's lots of rumours, there's lots of suspicion, there's lots of misinformation. Arguably more than anyone, Rasheen Campbell-Palmer is responsible for Britain's beaver resurgence. Some people even call her Britain's beaver lady. I'm coming up to my 13th year of working directly with beavers, so this is, to me, the highlight of my work. She started these beavers on their journey by trapping them in Scotland. That's where most of the UK's beavers are found now. She teamed up with a Norfolk environmental group whose members worked for eight years to find a home and get permits so the beavers could be released here. For Jonah Tosney, seeing them was the culmination of a lifetime's work. Massively excited, actually, yeah. Um, it's, it's the biggest thing I've done in my career. Every native Norfolk species you can imagine that's associated wet, with wetlands or ponds, they absolutely thrive when beavers arrive. Scotland still only has roughly a thousand beavers across the entire countryside, so it's not like it has that many to send to England. But even that relatively small number has proven extremely controversial. The return of the beaver to Britain has become a gnawing problem for farmers. Do I like beavers? Beavers are ingenious animals, although I'd rather their ingeniousness was not done here. Adrian Ivory farms near Perth, and he's had lots of run-ins with beavers and their tree-chewing, dam-building ways. And we've had dams, I'm six foot, and I've had them way above my head, and the only way we can get them out is with a digger, and I have to pay for that expense. Ivory showed us how beaver activity along a creek has ruined his fences, caused soil erosion, and flooded crops. So when you say seven acres got flooded out, this to be clear, you already had the seeds in the ground? You're... Yeah, we'd already sown the crop. Mm -hmm. It had already been plowed, drilled, rolled. Seed was coming through, so all that expense had already been incurred. And then it was completely gone, rotted out. In Scotland, beavers are listed as a protected species, but farmers still got government-issued permits to kill at least 70 nuisance beavers last year. That triggered a lawsuit and has aroused the passions of beaver defenders who believe a species that's recovering must be preserved, not killed. And there may be no place more passionate about the beaver than the Scottish town of Ayleth. The beaver experience this evening is uh, we'll see this wonderful beaver wetland. We'll look at the dams. Ecologist Daniel Muir has a booming ecotourism business, taking people out to see beavers in the wild. You know, you can see where they've chewed off the branches. These so-called beaver safaris are meant to show that wherever beavers move in, new plants and animals follow. That's the beavers, you know, providing homes for lots of wee beasties. Here, as in most parts of the UK, there is little true wilderness. Most of the land is carefully organized and managed, and beavers mess it up, which is at the root of the tension. All these farmers on the Erecht and the Isle and the Tay have got these licenses to kill them, and you know these, these animals, you don't know if they're gonna to manage to survive. And I just think it's, it's a shame that well, first of all, that we don't carry out lots of mitigation measures so that humans and beavers can live alongside each other in harmony. Um, and if beavers are to be relocated, I would love them to be relocated here in Scotland. 
On the farm, Adrian Ivory says he prefers to trap rather than kill beavers and move them to places where they're wanted. But he knows not all farmers have the patience for that. What's the solution? I, I, the, the, you know, the, some people say extermination and some people say oh, they can't be touched. My belief is it's somewhere in the middle. We, we as farmers need to learn to live with them, although we have to have the tools in our armory to be able to uh, take dams down and stuff like that to mitigate our losses. The reintroduction of beavers to Britain has been an ecological success. In just a decade or so, the beavers have quickly adapted. It may take the people who live around them a lot longer to adapt to them. Chris Brown, CBC News in Norfolk, England.